I personally believe it's too late to save the life of state in our country. Uh, it still have uses, but I don't believe it'll be the dominant herbicide. We can't build a program around it in the South. The world's best herbicide. I doubt we will ever see another herbicide discovered comparable to glyphosate, and unfortunately, it's gone for us. Same accent, same story. Glyphosate's losing battle with resistance is a painful reality for many of the world's farmers, and nowhere is that more apparent than in the southern USA. Go back to 1996, and the only place in the world with known resistance to glyphosate was Australia. Well, the first two populations were in Australia, and they were a, uh, a field in Victoria, and then an apple orchard at Orange, uh, where the glyphosate resistance were the first cases in the world. Uh, it attracted a lot of attention, but uh, what really attracted attention was when the first weeds resistant to glyphosate appeared in US soybean fields. In 1996, that was still four years away. But something did happen back then in 96 to set the course for what followed. The release of glyphosate resistant Roundup Ready crops in the USA. Glyphosate resistant crops, particularly glyphosate resistant soybeans, corn, cotton and canola, dramatically improved agricultural pro productivity and became the most rapidly adopted technology in the history of agriculture. With adoption of Roundup Ready crops, the use of other herbicides targeting different sites in a weed's makeup went pretty much out the window. The, the release of, of Roundup Ready soybeans was in 1996. And we went from eight different sites of action that were applied on at least 10% of the fields uh, down to pretty much just glyphosate by 2004. So that was a staggering drop in the diversity of herbicides going on these fields. The Roundup Ready system doesn't dictate that no other herbicides be used, but that's how it worked in practice. For many, that was because it offered a way around the resistance they already had. Prior to the Roundup Ready crops in those areas, they had been using the ACCA's inhibitor the uh, uh, ALS inhibitor herbicides and getting a lot of resistances, triazines. So they were in big trouble prior to 1996 with, with the first introduction of the Roundup Ready soybean. And that really came to their rescue. That enabled them to continue farming because they were, they were almost out of options. Now, for others, in fact for everyone, it, it was just easier. Raise, they did level the playing field for all farmers. You know, weed control was an art before Roundup Ready, and it basically raised the playing field to 100% weed control to everybody. Uh, takes the thinking out of weed control. But the crash when it came was sudden and brutal. And uh, so we kind of went through about 10 years of bliss. Uh, and then we just started noticing our fields were not as clean. Uh, you'd just drive by a field and see a single weed out there in it, or, or just a scattered weed here and there. Didn't think a whole lot about it. Uh, about a year later, we started seeing spots and streaks in the field. And you know, of course, most, most farmers wanted to blame it on the spray rig driver, but the next year, uh, they didn't harvest the field. Oh, it's gotten to the point where essentially we've had farmers that have lost the farm. Um, there's individuals that I was working with the past few years. He had 8,000 acres of, of soybean, which would be around 3,500 uh, hectares. And he's no longer in business today as a result of that. And if you drive across the state back in 2010, 2011, it was field after field that basically we completely lost the crop. If we look around the world, um, you can see in uh, uh, the U USA leading the way uh, with the highest uh, uh, population of, of glyphosate resistant weeds and then uh, also Brazil and Argentina. These are where Roundup Ready crops have, have been grown and this is, this is where we're seeing the, the biggest areas, the biggest problems of glyphosate resistant weeds. The Roundup Ready trait hasn't had an easy entry into Australia, being held up by regulation over its GM status. That now seems a blessing in some ways, not because it's bad technology, but because it's good technology that's worth protecting. Uh, we can learn from the Americans. Now I've got my own farm, and on that farm we grow Roundup Ready canola. Nothing wrong with Roundup Ready canola. Uh, what the thing to do is to use that as a tool, along with everything else that we have, to have diversity in the system, uh, so as to keep glyphosate going. Folks, if I go back to the 
60s, the 70s. This was a common occurrence in the Mid-South. I actually grew up on a small farm where a large percentage of our time was spent hand weeding. It's unfortunate that this photo was not taken in the 60s. It was not taken in the 70s. Folks, here's what we're doing today. Because if we're going to be successful, we have got to prevent seed production. And I could care less how we prevent seed production. The key to success is we must prevent seed production. In that respect, Australia leads the world. While it's an accident of history that Roundup Ready crops were delayed here, Australian expertise in driving down the weed seed bank, harvest weed seed capture in particular, is attracting intense interest from North America. And they're kicking themselves that they didn't think of it earlier. The glyphosate system, the Roundup Ready system, it worked. Where would we be today? Where would we be today if we had actually done something different the following year? If we added diversity to this program? Glyphosate is likely to be driven to redundancy in large parts of the USA uh, due to uh, overuse, the world's greatest herbicide. We should do everything we can to keep glyphosate going in Australian agriculture and global agriculture because it is as important to world food production as antibiotics are to human health.